Hello, uh, my name is Vithold. I work at Vega Protocol um, and today I would like to talk to you for our recent paper on incentivizing exchange liquidity provisions. Um, I would like to set the scene by briefly revisiting the concept of liquidity and also discussing why it's important for exchanges um, and then proceed by discussing some of the mechanism design ideas that we've put forward in our paper. Uh, when doing the literature review for our paper, we came across this really interesting paper by Fisher Black from almost 50 years ago, which gives a really useful definition of a liquid market. Such market will always have bid and ask prices so that small amounts can be traded immediately. The difference between those prices will be small. A large amount of stock can be traded at a price that shouldn't deviate too much from the current price, as long as it's done over a long period of time and no new information comes to the market and trading the same amount immediately will result in a discount or a premium that will be proportional to the size of the block. Okay, so why exchanges care about liquidity? For all exchanges, increased liquidity provides a better trading experience for its participants, which means more activity, which means more fees, which means more revenues. But for derivatives exchanges, liquidity is crucial for a safe operation of such a venue. And I mean derivatives in the broadest sense, so any sort of margin trading. A trader unable to meet the margin obligations can only be removed if there's sufficient volume on the order book so that his position can be offloaded to a different participant, thus securing the interests of his original counterpart. All of those considerations contribute to a safer and more efficient operation of a trading venue, which in turn brings more trading activity to it, which increases liquidity even further. Thus, exchanges are naturally interested in kickstarting this process so that liquidity begets more liquidity. Typically, this is done via bespoke legal agreement between exchanges and designated market makers who take on obligations for providing certain amount of liquidity in exchange for rewards. For example, the New York Stock Exchange's SLP program specifies that its participants must maintain bids or offers at the national best level in each of the assigned securities at least 10% of a trading day. They must trade for their own accounts and not for any clients and any trades that result from those bids or offers receive rebates from the New York Stock Exchange. Such programs, operated by exchanges or issuers themselves, have been shown to be successful in creating liquidity for new and small cap markets. However, since such programs are expensive to construct and enforce, it means they are not scalable and they result in higher fees than would have otherwise been necessary. Thus, we proceed with a market-based mechanism for incentivizing liquidity. I would like to start by going through some of the design principles that we had in mind when working on this mechanism. Um, so firstly, we wanted there to be enough of an incentive so that even new and novel markets would receive enough support so that they can grow and prosper. But at the same time, we wanted the liquidity to be firm so it stays there even in adverse market conditions. We also wanted the liquidity provision to be open to anyone so that liquidity providers can self-serve by submitting an appropriate transaction, thus reducing the barriers to entry and increasing competition, so that the fees in the market can be reflective of a true cost of providing liquidity and to preclude the rent-seeking behavior. So let's start discussing the details of our mechanism. Um, and in this talk, I'll focus mostly on what has informed the final design of the liquidity provision at Vega that we are getting ready to roll out soon. But I do encourage you to check out the original paper where for each of the aspects of the mechanism that we're going to talk about, we present a few competing ideas that may be more suited to other types of exchanges. The starting point for our mechanism is estimating the liquidity demand for the market. From that, we can imply the total committed liquidity we need from the providers, and from that, the total stake required to, to secure that liquidity. We arrive at each of those quantities through a series of affine transformations, which give us enough degrees of freedom to fine-tune it for needs of different market types. We find that for derivatives markets, open interest provides a good estimate of the liquidity demand, as it gives us a view on how many contracts are outstanding in the market, and therefore how many of them we may need to close if there is adverse market moves against some of the traders. We use the rolling time window to only focus on the latest market dynamics. All markets on Vega start with an opening auction, so initially the open interest is the volume traded in that auction. We then go through the bids submitted by liquidity providers, sort them increasingly by the fee amount, and we choose the fee so that there is enough stake for the market to function properly. Um, fee bids can be changed at any time, so this will fluctuate over time. 
Let's quickly go for an example to see how this is meant to work in practice. So this is an open interest throughout the lifetime of a stylized market, which in turn informs our target stake, which at any point in time tells us how much stake we need committed from the market makers so that the market can function properly. Let's say initially this is something like 50,000, then we know we need to accept those two bids and the resulting fee level for the market will be 0.2 of a percent. The other market maker is still welcome to stay in the market, but he needs to accept the lower fee than he has bid for. This is constantly re-evaluated as the target stake and the bids from the liquidity providers change. Once the bids have been accepted, the liquidity providers have an obligation to supply enough liquidity as implied by their stake amount. We measure that liquidity as the probability weighted volume on the order book, and we take the minimum of the two sides of the book to make sure that there are both bids and asks provided. We measure the probability of trading using the same risk model that is used for the margin calculation for the market. The purpose of that is to discourage the liquidity providers from placing orders that are too far away from the mid price. The amount staked by liquidity providers get moved to a dedicated bond account, which cannot be accessed by them at will. They can always increase the stake if they wish to do so, but they can only decrease it if doing so would still leave enough liquidity in the market. While liquidity providers can fulfill their commitment by manually managing their orders, we also ask them to submit what we call an order shape along with their liquidity transaction. It is a predefined set of pegged orders with relative weightings, which get deployed if the liquidity provided by the other orders is not enough to cover the commitment. Here you can see the probability of trading implied by the risk model that we touched on earlier. And you, as you can see, it decays as we move away from the mid. Hence, the volume for the, each of the orders gets higher as they are further away from the mid. If at any point in time, the liquidity provider's margin account balance is too low to cover their orders, either the manual ones or the automatically deployed ones, we use the money in their bond account to make up the shortfall. We also apply a small penalty and move it to the market's insurance pool to discourage relying on that kind of funding. Obviously, the liquidity providers are in a market to make profits, so let's wrap up this talk by discussing how we split the rewards between them. All the fees collected in the market are kept in a special account and they are distributed among the liquidity providers periodically. The rewards collected in each period are split among the participating liquidity providers according to their equity share. It depends on both the size of their stake, but also the ratio between the current value of the market and the value of the market from the time they posted their stake. This provides additional incentives to support markets in their early phases or at the times when their value drops. I hope you found this session informative. Uh, you can find links to all our research papers here, including the one we just discussed. And within that paper, there is a link to a GitHub repository containing IPython notebooks used for generating the charts pr presented in the paper and also some agent-based simulations that we use to validate and explore those ideas. If you would like to reach out, please feel free to email me directly at vital.vega.xyz or post on our community forums, which you can find here. Thank you.